Okay, let's we'll start again. Uh, and I would like to, for the second time, to welcome uh, James Nobis back to, to Dagen in Norway. It was also here in December, presenting on rainbow tables. And uh, this then is not uh, the same presentation over again. This is most definitely a uh, new content, and I should uh, say, at least to me, it's very interesting to, to uh, very interesting uh, topic that we'll be presenting on. So, James, you want to guess? Okay. So, we'll run down a quick bio on me. Uh, background information, if you're not familiar with rainbow tables, it's going to be very brief though, and then we're going to talk uh, partially about uh, our new file format, which enables uh, less disk space use and is actually uh, an enabling factor for the, um, the two things that I'm actually really here to talk about. So freerainbowtables.com basically is a project in which our budget is uh, generally, um, oh, you'll give us free hosting? That's fantastic, okay. Um, so our budget is um, uh, free to very cheap. So, no, we don't make money, um, and um, we get a little bit of ad revenue. Um, anyway, so um, this has nothing to do with my day job. Uh, that's my official day job title. Um, mostly I do um, Linux Open BSD administration. I do some programming. NetBSD happens to be one of uh, the servers for the projects that I run. Uh, I have a university degree in computer science, and I don't even work in the security industry. This is all a hobby for me. Okay, this is the entire amount of background information you're going to get on rainbow tables if you are not familiar with them. If you're not familiar with them, um, you'll just have to watch uh, my talk from Passwords 10, um, and I'll make the slides available and the PDFs, all of the reference. Uh, links like the one at the bottom, you can simply click and it will take you to the um, citation with the URL and so forth. Um, in addition, I did bring some DVDs that have all of the passwords 10 talks um, that are sitting on the desk um, for those that either uh, haven't downloaded them or are going back to places like where I live where download speed is slow. Um, feel free to grab one of those. or. Um, see the reference to um, download them. All right, so Rainbow Tables uh, refers to a generic time memory trade-off um, for if essentially any cipher, any hash, and when specifically talking about ones of cryptographic nature uh, for the most part. We're not talking about CRC or other strange things that people sometimes ask us if we can make Rainbow Tables for, which never quite made sense. Um, so the other part of it is that it is probabilistic in nature. While the tables we generate are 99.9% um, uh, probability of finding your password, they are not lookup tables. Uh, as an example, um, here is a key space. I believe this one is the one for um, lower alpha. Oh, never mind, I put it up there. That's from the, our an MD5 set we did, this lower alpha length 1 through 10. Um, that's the key space to 47. So on. If you actually did that, it's just a basic lookup table with no nothing special whatsoever of storing. Um, well, actually, that's only that would only be the storage of the MD5. Anyway, so actually the storage is larger than that, but um, it makes the point nonetheless. Um, in our original format RTI, it's about 280 um, gigabytes, and that's. Um, base 2, not base 10, hard drive manufacturer math. In our new format, uh, that same set is approximately 112. And um, that's the um, success rate for that table. Um, it's somewhere uh, approximately greater than 99.905, which depends on how many extra chains we end up generating and other things. All right, so RTI2 is, um, the, the file format that we've had for years is um, just RTI, um, and the original original rainbow table format, which is called RT, the file extension .rt, um, RTI just says is rainbow table improved, uh, essentially. Um, the initial design and implementation, um, and I 
wish that I had people that are no longer in the project. Um, it, his online name is Powerblade, or um, I refer to him as Martin, generally. Um, was uh, one of the people that originally wrote it. And then for, well, actually, sorry, he originally did part of RTI, and then he pretty much independently worked on um, what was the first draft kind of of RTI 2. And then um, we decided that it would be best if we had some sort of header, because right now the very long file names essentially encode all the data about that given um, file, which starts to get a little bit absurd. The header design is uh, from someone in the forums, Scoobs, who more recently has started to actually use his real name in a lot of things, C. Thomas. And um, they, he essentially makes a lot of things possible, um, whether it's fixing my inability to um, add, which happens a lot in the, uh, when we're computing things, and um, for you know, programming and so forth. And essentially, uh, the citation there is a link to our forums, um, which is basically the specification for the, um, the actual format that we ended up going with. Um, essentially, before, if for anyone familiar with the tables, we had, um, for each uh, data part, we had a .rti file and a .rti.index file formats changed um, so that the data and the indexes are in um, a single file. And we're storing all the parameters in the header of the file, and so the um, at some point in the future we won't get posts like I just saw two days ago in which someone had renamed the file to something like my rainbow table dot RTI and wanted to know why it ceased working. Um, in the previous format, it's a fixed length um, for the uh, chain store, which obviously when they're uh, zero bytes, it's kind of silly. So um, this format is variable length chains, which means we can make more efficient use of the data. Um, they are bit packed in a sense, except we are not fully bit packing. It's um, sealed to the next byte. And um, Project Rainbow Crack, when they did RTC, um, that's actually the approach they took for their, uh, and they refer to it as bit packing as well. Um, other important part is RTI2 allows per position character sets, um, which in particular we always are getting requests for, can you add an exclamation point there, a question mark there, and in the current format, um, that's actually a bit difficult. Um, so this should enable more flexibility. And this is just a quick performance comparison. These are actually um, hashes that I had run um, in December. And that's a comparison between the RTI and the RTI2 set. In particular, you'll notice the biggest change being on the disk access time, which um, for that particular set, uh, disk access time is starting to become quite a bit of the bounding factor. All right, hybrids, why do we need them? Um, why has it taken us so long? And um, what's hybrid two? So um, we've generated a few key spaces um, of rainbow tables. Um, this is a sampling. Um, pretty much almost all of these sets exist for both MD5 and NTLM. Uh, um, I've got some notable exceptions up there, which is um, if you take a look at uh, Fourth one down, lm frt that, That's actually a uh, landman set that includes a very good chunk of almost every possible um, character. Um, landman, uh, actually, you break in halves, so um, you don't ever have to uh, break more than seven characters at a time. And other than that, um, so we, we kind of run through a lot of the things as far as key space, size, uh, attack time is uh, just for, you know, purely just doing a key space without any sort of intelligence. So uh, it's time to, that we move on a bit. Um, those last sets, key spaces anywhere from 2 to the 36 to 2 to the 47 and some change. Um, and the sizes on disk for all those sets range from 
anywhere from 1.8 gig to 530 gig. Um, we already have some new sets that are essentially complete but not yet released with a bit larger key space. And um, if you note the sizes, uh, basically it's completely impractical to release those as um, RTI, um, even for us uh, on the generation side where um, we don't have an infinite supply of uh, disks. And um, the other part is when we've got full generation going between the Blink clients um, for those key spaces that are on the high end, it's 61 days for the client generation side of it to com do the full set. Um, so not that long. Um, I think we have about 1,000 um, users attached and uh, some number of GPUs and CPUs. Um, so options we have instead of looking at hybrid um, key spaces could be, should we go for a lower success rate? Um, this is what um, Project Rainbow Crack, which is, uh, I should mention that a single one of their large tables runs for about 1,200 US dollars. Um, and most of our sets, uh, we cover pretty much almost all the sets they do and we don't, um, we give them away. Because not everybody can convince their IT staff to spend $1,200 times some number of tables just to do some basic security auditing. And for that matter, some of us actually can use them in our day job as um, both Martin and I are system administrators during the day. Another option, a lot of people are always saying we should just ignore everything except for graphics cards. And um, personally, I own one and only one graphics card that's capable of doing um, compute things, uh, uh, NVIDIA um, CUDA card. And I purchased that in October simply for this project. Um, and I don't think everybody has a graphics card. And especially on laptops, graphics cards are generally still quite limited. So, why should we settle for less? I don't think we should. Some people think so, but nah. So our first attempt for hybrids was actually, it's actually quite old. And um, this was something that uh, it's kind of fun to read. Um, OK, it's fun for me to read. In which Scoops was um, uh, discovered the fact that there was a bias in the key space that he he didn't quite, at first he wasn't quite sure what exactly the bias was. Um, and then it turned out that it made some, uh, ended up making some uh, passwords twice as more likely to be found. So the actual success rate of the tables was much lower than uh, expected. Um, for that set of hybrid, that type of hybrids, um, first character set, fixed length, and then um, you can only have two character sets where you had, you know, like your seven um, lower alpha at the beginning and your um, variable length numeric one through three at the end. And that's all you could have. You couldn't have more than that. All right, so moving along, hybrid two. Um, again, uh, Scoops basically said, hey, well, we can fix it and just treat each character set as a key space of itself or a sub key space and you put them together and you have the full key space. The code is finally complete and deployed at least on the CPU side. Um, yes, I was fixing bugs like a week ago in the generation code, so it's not quite, but. Um, and this is the set that Pear was talking about, and he can call them boring password statistics all that he wants, but they are extremely useful password statistics as they um, form some of the basis for the decision to make that set. Um, so we already have a set that covers mixed alpha numeric length one through eight, so this is a set to complement that. And um, yes, that is length nine, 10, or 11, with the given characteristic, the first character is uppercase, five lowercase, and then um, two alphanumeric, and then um, you have uh, anywhere between one and three numbers on the end. And we need good statistics. And Pear seems to have some data. And uh, when he has time, as he always mentions, that he needs to have time, as we all do, uh, he plans on um, 
I'm putting together more posts and so forth. And so, um, anyone else with good corporate data and password statistics, like uh, you can share or hint at sets that you would find useful if you can't share. Uh, that's very helpful because I do not work in the security industry and I'm a small company and so my access to real corporate password statistics is extremely limited. So the project is very community driven. Um, give us feedback on what there's need for, what we should do, where we should go. All right, so the full implementation allows multiple character sets per sub key space, but we're gonna just take a look at the one that's the simplest first, which is the one that we're doing. And simply, you take the key space of each sub key space, and um, you end up with the total key space. So you effectively, you um, go into the reduction function, you take it for the first key space, you then go and do the next one, you concatenate those, and you continue on. The only limitation really to hybrid two is that the only character set really to have in this first <coughs> implementation, now this is the implementation uh, that will change. This is a, lim a limitation of the file format. Right now only the final character set can have um, the variable length. All right, so sub key spaces. Per position character sets, four different lengths. And multiple character sets for any given position can allow some things like um, ordering the table for faster attacks. Um, in fact, that's something that Project Rainbow Crack has already done, and um, it does get very interesting. All right, Omni 6 will be an interesting topic, and um, let's see, I'm not doing too badly. Um, this is a paraphrase from um, Scoops yet again, and um, it's actually the reduction function uh, as you're going along. Um, uh, it happens to be a divide and mod. Um, if the key spaces were not increasing, then you would have some issues um, mapping that. So um, this is what Scoots refers to as Omni 6. He actually has a full character set, uh, or rather a full key space of something that's called Omni 5 that's uh, on his site for um, uh, his hash lookups on Omni 5, um, I think, I forget if it's an average of 200 milliseconds or if that's the max bound, or it's either that the max bound is 200 milliseconds or that the max bound is one second to do the lookup. Um, and that's a website with, um, I believe, PHP on the front end. Um, the reason for the name Omni is the Asterisk there, um, Omni meaning all, and um, Omni six specifically referring to the second line down, um, in which there are six of them, and that actually refers to 95 characters, not not all per se, but that's what a lot of people refer to as all because you're talking about the space well into um, you know covering um, alpha numeric, um, upper lower, um, and 32 symbols, and that's. Uh, same thing with John the Ripper or any other tools, generally that's considered all. So, um, what you see, the whole thing down the left side is actually an ordering of um, sub-key spaces that he defined for what he called on these six. And um, now, that actual construct uh, as is, we can't directly turn into rainbow tables, so it does have to be reorganized to a degree. And this is actually that reordering. Um, I'm showing uh, his format down the left side, um, and then down the center is the key space for each of those sub key spaces, and on the right hand column is actually the size on the actual size, if we generate it as RTI2 using um, a chain length of only 20,000, um, which means they'll be quite fast. Um, for the, about the last last year, most of our um, tables were generated with a, key space, or with a chain length of 40,000, and in these larger sets, we've moved to 60,000. 
Um, that doesn't actually increase generation time, it decreases disk space usage, it does increase attack time. Um, the reason for the zero um, there is that that got transformed into uh, numeric of, um, I believe, length 10 through 11. But so the total size of that is actually quite small. And what happens here is, given this full set, um, instead of just having an aggregate where you know you have to search through all of it, um, you can literally go from smaller to larger key spaces and look for, you can organize it in certain fashions so that you are um, attacking either the simpler or the more likely first instead of having to run through everything. So this is what Scoops gave me as what this would look like if we stuck with the um, encoding the full name and spec of everything in the file name. That's 433 characters. It's completely unreadable. And most operating systems and file systems do not allow you to have 250, more than 255 characters in a file name. So pair, sorry, but um, we can't keep that file naming convention as descriptive as it is. Although I don't believe most people would find that very descriptive. <laughs> it depends, I guess, on who you ask. Without file name completion, fat chance of anybody typing the what? <laughs> Without file name completion, fat chance of anybody typing the file name in. Well, yes, of course. Um, and that wouldn't help them anyway. You wouldn't be able to create the file name. Um, I don't think there's not Windows, not Mac, not Linux, not any of the file systems will let you have a file name over 255 characters, I believe. Uh, yeah, the, the, the yeah. standard code is Unix file names are infinite in length, where infinity is set to 256 characters. Right. <laughs> yes. I'm pretty sure Windows allows you to have longer, but the programs within Windows won't let you. Um, I tried creating one that was exactly 257, and it said file name too long. Um, in Windows XP with an NTFS file system. Yeah, okay. But the backend on NTFS, I think, allows for it. Oh, maybe the file system allows it, but if Windows doesn't, it's kind of, okay. Um, let's see. I may Yes. So I, I find this sort of another thing very interesting. And have you managed to validate with, with for example, the data from her, whether it is actually true that from a given real life set, the ones that you find first are the ones that you put on? Well, actually, so um, so that set, which will be our first hybrid two set, um, isn't generated yet. And this set, which is an example of possibilities of things that we could do in the future, is of course not generated yet. So um, no, not yet. Um, the, uh, See, it looks like an interesting thing to do, but also a, a non-trivial uh, space to explore to actually verify that you have done the best possible uh, thing given a specific data set. Sure, right, and that's <coughs> that's the uh, we need quite a bit of data statistics to to make sure that we're not making um, useless tables, um, and right, we're not. We're not trying to target uh, you know, one specific data set. Of course, uh, sometimes, especially for good corporate password statistics, um, you know, everybody signed six NDAs before they even got to look at the password hashes, so um, it becomes a little bit harder. Um, our main focus um, is on NT Landman because the Landman hash is, at some point, going to go away. And right now, that gives us a very easy way um, to rather rather trivially uh, break just about any Windows hash, and then once you've cracked the landman hash, it's simply a matter of case correction or Unicode correction to get to the um, NT hash. So you never have to attack the NT hash directly. Of course, that's going to change, um, and so thus our window for getting those statistics will continue to close, um, especially if somebody's got uh, Vista 7, uh, 2008, which by default don't store the landman hash. 
And Although, is there any chance of this Windows moving to like salty salted hashes? Well, the Landman hash. Let's see. Um, that's what they've had since was it Windows ninety five or three one? No, uh, three, uh, three one. Three one, and they added the NT hash somewhere in NT three point one or three point five, I guess. Right, and then it showed up in Windows two thousand. None of the Win nine X series had it. And they've stored those two side by side since then. So let's see, when was 3.5? Yeah, with, with, with Windows Vista and so 2003, uh, you can still create Laman hashes, by, but uh, the algorithm is disabled by default. So Not on server 2003, on 2008. It's disabled. 2003 keeps Landman enabled by default. Oh, okay, sorry. 93.5 was around 90. Right. Yeah. So we added the NT hash to the landman construction. So that's been um, what 17 years. Can't do math anymore. At least not uh, simple math <laughs> with numbers. You yeah. know, I need letters. Um, so it took that long for them to start phasing out the landman hash. And it's what Perry would you probably going to take five to ten years to see the landman hash actually phased out. Yeah. Um, and they don't even have assaulted anything on the horizon. Um, uh, hang on one sec. Uh, but so, yeah, assaulting would be a, a good start. Uh, moving off MB4 would be a good start. <laughs> um, but so, uh, given how, when they finally added the NT hash and how long it's taken them to begin to phase out the landman hash, and they don't even have something to replace the NT hash, I think it's going to be quite a while before we see um, unsalted MD4 go away. Let, 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 let us just put it this, uh, this way, uh, Frank. If, if you should have any master students who need something more to do, I, I, I think James would be happy to uh, introduce rainbow tables to them. So, <laughs> but just go on with your presentation, so we'll also make a uh, lunch. Well, actually, uh, I may be uh, ahead of schedule. A bit short. Oh. Um, but, uh, I, I was wondering, uh, this, these sets that you have, they are for attacking uh, the old Landman ashes? Or we have sets for Landman, MD5, NT9 Man, some SHA-1, MySQL SHA-1, which is just double SHA-1. Um, that's actually our most incomplete hash that at some point we'll go back with GPUs and fill those out. Um, let's see. Oh, we do have some of the um, half landman challenge response. Am I missing any hashes? When you asked the sizes for the key sets, that was for MD5, or is that? For these? Uh, yeah, we had a list of, of the sizes of the subsets. Oh, oh. Or the, uh, well, technically, uh, yeah. this one? Yeah. Technically, um, it doesn't matter. Like, we haven't made this set. Okay. Uh, and Scoot specifically says, I'd really love this set to see the set made so I don't have to make it myself. Um, but it doesn't matter. Um, those key spaces that would apply to um, MD5, NT, um, LM, um, SHA-1, MySQL SHA-1, um, the key space for the uh, passwords uh, doesn't change with the hash algorithm, with strange exceptions like Landman, because it splits it in half and it only has a to link seven and it's case insensitive. Yep, that's, uh, that was all that I um, came with. I probably ended up rushing through it because last time <laughs> I did the opposite. Um, but that's contact information for me. Um, I did get cards made that on the back have my GPG key. I was very excited to already uh, exchange keys with one person. Um, oh, now I'm afraid. All right. Uh, show of hands for people that actually actively use PGP or GPG. Whoa, that's like double passwords 10. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, exchanging fingerprints on paper, good. Uh, <laughs>
my business card if you'd like to go that way. Our business card is a, kind of a funny term. There are cards that I made myself. I don't actually have business cards because I'm a, not a, um, I sit in a, a, you know, I'm a behind the scenes kind of person. They don't send me <laughs> on advertising kind of things. So the cards I made to, because after I got back from Norway the last time, people kept asking me to come talk at things and were just always asking if I had a card. So it was like, oh, uh, I need, okay, I guess I should have some of those. <laughs> uh, more questions? No? Yeah, uh, yeah before we uh, give you the applause as well, I would also say that we, we are, uh, uh, the project is actually looking for <coughs> storage space uh, because the rainbow tables are now like 2 point something terabytes? We have 2.7 terabytes in RTI that's going to drop in about half with RTI 2. The storage space actually doesn't become the problem, it's the hosting and bandwidth. Um, currently our backend server is um, in Los Angeles, California and has a full 100 megabit link, which when we're running full generation with GPUs, um, has a constant inbound from return results of about 23 megabits. That's the server handling the actual work. Um, once all the data is there and converted, it then has to make a very slow transit to Europe, and um, that has something to do with US peering providers that um, it's very intriguing what they do on the main data, but uh, that then has to traverse to uh, our primary um, uh, mirror seed, which is actually in the Netherlands. And from there it goes to uh, a server in Italy that's on the Italian research network at a university there. Um, it's got a full gigabit, but they also host things like Ubuntu and OpenOffice. And so after a new OpenOffice or Ubuntu release, their bandwidth is pretty much uh, gone. We do have torrents for basically every set. We have several people in the community that have essentially found cheap hosting with a full 100 megabit connection, so most of them are seeded to a degree or another. Um, so, yes, if anybody has, let's see, because once we convert them and, yeah, so if anybody has two plus terabytes of disk space and um, 100 megabit plus of bandwidth with no uh, usage caps, um, uh, or has contacts at a university that may be interested. Um, uh, distribution is currently a large problem. And of course, anybody that likes programming, particularly C, um, Mark and I are kind of the majority of the programming team at this point. So it takes a bit of time for stuff to get. And if you don't want to bother downloading them, you can pay and get a hard drive mailed to you with them preloaded. That's true. That's actually our primary revenue stream, which is on maybe once a month, somebody will actually pay to have a hard drive shipped to them. And um, that's managed to keep us um, kind of balanced. Um, I think we've had a month now and then that we actually had, hey, wow, we, okay, we, we, got, we sold two drives this month, cool, all right, we can finally upgrade the server that is running with 8 gig of RAM and swapping 4 gig constantly, uh, we can finally <laughs> upgrade the RAM, so, um, yeah. And I've also, also talked to the University of Handbagging and also probably to try to talk to NTNU at least, because Rainbow tables are definitely of research interest as well, so I would try to convince somebody into hosting them. And I mean, if you're interested in tables, I've got lots of them at home, and uh, uh, I will also join in, uh, join in onto the uh, BitTorrent stream so that everybody can help out with sharing the rainbow yeah. table files. And, yeah, I was going to say, I should add, uh, it's kind of funny when I give presentations and people say, well, do you sell them on the site? You know, how can they be free and things like that? And um, so, it, anybody that's local to anyone that has the tables, please share, uh, copy drives, etc. Uh, um, you know, when I give talks locally, uh, I'm perfectly happy. Give me a hard drive, and I will copy them. Parrot, you actually have all the ones that we've currently released. Pretty close. I think. Yeah. Um, 
so, but um, and copy and copying two point seven terabytes of data. That's like that's like you know, <laughs> yeah, not, not a problem. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, especially copying them to USB drives. It yeah. takes about a day. Yeah. Well, I think Literally. yeah, we should give him a round of applause for Thames.